Hi, this is Dr. Pan recording from Tucson, Arizona. Today we're talking about quadratics. This is the last part of a three portion series on quadratics. A quick review, part one, we talked about where quadratic fits overall. Think of the seven dwarfs and quadratic is pretty young. Lines, quadratic all the way to trig. And then part two, we talked about solving for roots, which are the x-intercept of the curve has three methods, uh, factoring, we talked in part one, uh, quadratic equation in part two, and part three we're going to talk about complete square and why complete square is a such powerful tool in solving both the vertex and roots. Okay, so here's the function. We're asked to solve for roots. First thing to do, you can factor, you can use quadratic equation, that's where the part one and two are covered. Part three, we're going to do the completing square. Now, completing square is a, it's a really neat um, concept. Basically, we're saying, look, here's the function equal to two, and x squared plus five x plus six inside. What I'm going to do is I'm going to magically add a part and subtract it right away because I don't want to change the function to begin with. Okay, so, and then the magic thing I'm going to put in there is half of whatever the coefficient in front of x is. I'm going to square it. And then the, since I added that thing, I'm going to subtract it right away. There's a reason I don't like to have students do it on the other side of the equal sign. Often they forget the coefficients in front of it. So over the years, I tell the students, it's much easier to think you can add something and subtract it right away. Or you earn something, a paycheck, and you gamble it out right away. Or maybe you took your girlfriend out and you spend it right away. Whatever the floats your boat. Uh, the trick is once you add this magic number, if you were to group the first three numbers, then becomes a perfect square. That's the word completing square. Okay, and then I'm going to gather all this stuff out, which is 25 over 4 plus 6. 6 is really 4 times 4. So I'm, I'm going to combine them so that this is really the same thing here. I'm going to combine them so I have common denominator over here. And then what I'm going to do is combine those two, which is minus one, and then I'm going to put the two back in there. So it's x plus five over two squared minus, so two times this chunk, two times this chunk, which is half over here. Okay, so basically I rewrote my function from the original equation. Let's rewrite that function all the way out here, which is two x squared plus 10 x plus six. I rewrote it into a different form this is called a vertex form. The reason it's called a vertex form, you'll see in a, in a moment, it'll get really clear. Okay, since we're looking for roots over here, all we're really saying is, at what point is f of x equal to zero? Well, that's really easy. Let's put this thing equal to zero then. Zero is equal to two times x plus five over two squared minus half. Okay, so I'm gonna do the half over equal to two x plus five over two squared divided by two, it's quarter equal to square five over two, whole thing squared. Okay. So up to this point, that's all I did is completing square. Okay. All right, solving for this one, I'm gonna slap the radical sign on, on both sides. You'll say x1 is equal to three minus three, and x2 equal to minus two, just like we solved before. Okay. Now, the neat part about completing square is that it doesn't have to stop over there. Since you rewrote this whole thing in a different form, watch the magic happens. So this chunk is finding roots. Okay. Now let's take a look what else you can do with this. Okay. So here's the function you rewrote it into two times x plus five over two minus half. Okay, this one is called a vertex form because, there's a square here, when x equal to minus five or two, watch what happens. This whole chunk goes away. Okay, thus leaving the f of x evaluated at this point equal to minus half. When x equal to this, y is equal to minus half. Thus becomes the vertex coordinates. 
minus 5 over 2, and minus half. Okay, so this completing square, because you took the function here, didn't put the zero here right away. You solved it in all the way, you complete the square. This is the completing square part. And then you took this form, this, uh, this notation and this form, and if you want to get to the zero, i.e. solving for it, and then you put a zero on the one side and you literally solve for it. Okay. If you don't want to solve for it and you just want to find where vertex is, then you take a look at the form and say, all right, if I set this chunk equal to zero, the smallest this function ever going to get is minus half. That's because this chunk is always going to be a positive or a non-zero. The smallest this ever could get is zero. And that's give you the vertex. Okay, if you would have graph this thing, this is where the vertex is, minus 5 over 2, right, between two, minus 2 and minus 3, and then little half. So here's your graph. Here's my vertex form. It is minus 5 over 2, minus half. Okay. Now, I prefer this method much better than trying to have student memorizing minus b over 2, a, and then have it evaluated to find the vertex because on the test, under pressure, chances are, A, you might forget the minus sign or you might forget the coefficient. There's so many students over the years lost so many points. So over the years, I've discouraged students trying to memorize it. I mean, the choices is pretty clear. If you have a choice of understanding math or memorize something, I would always say, ah, oh, got to use, uh, use understanding it because it'll save you so much work and so much trouble. All right, I think that's all the things that uh, there is to cover up for quadratics. There's a lot of word problems, so on and so forth, but the nuts and bolts is really just here. Um, completing square is one of the most important things. If you can master this process here, I will see you almost home free. All right, now that's how we handle our quadratics. Once again, from Tucson, Arizona, this is Dr. Pam making learning math fun and easy. Well, it's trying to. Please comment or thumb up if the video has been helpful. Until next time, have a confident day.